<laughs> do you have to be hip to do hip replacement? Absolutely not. If you noted, I've written a book here, and it's called Get Hip. Hi there, my name is Dr. Ivan Tomek. I'm Dr. Wayne Moschetti. I'm Alex Orm, and I'm an orthopedic surgeon here at Dartmouth Health. Today, we're here to answer your questions about hip replacement. How do I know that I need a hip replacement? Typically, you'll know you need a hip replacement when you find that your hip is really compromising the quality of your life. You're having a hard time walking. You're having a hard time keeping up with the grandkids. Hard time going up and down stairs. Commonly for folks, when you can't sleep anymore because your hip's waking you up, you know it's time to consider surgery. We recommend trying multiple non-operative things first, such as over-the-counter medications, physical therapy, maybe an injection. If you've tried those things and they're no longer working, and you are still having significant pain, then a hip replacement might be right for you. What is recovery like after hip replacement? I always tell patients, don't expect too much too early. Recovery takes time. By three months after surgery, after the implant and the bone have connected, at that point, you'll be about 60% recovered. At one year, you'll be about 95% recovered. Once muscles and all of the associated soft tissues recover, it may be two years for full recovery to occur. I also tell people that the first month after hip replacement is when it's gonna be achy. There's gonna be days when it feels great. There's gonna be days when you overdo it and it's gonna hurt afterwards. There's no benefit in overdoing it after surgery. Don't do your exercises more times than your physical therapist tells you to. For the first month after surgery, we want the soft tissues to heal. We want you to get better. And when you come back to see us a month after surgery, that's when the real work begins. How does a hip replacement work? Hip replacement surgery works by replacing the ball and socket of your hip joint. This is a hip model here. This is the front of your hip. This over here is the back of the hip. When I do a hip replacement, we make an incision on the front of your hip, what's called an anterior approach. And that means that I'm going in between these big muscles here and here, and we expose the bone inside. Once we get into the hip joint, one of the very first things we do is remove the old arthritic ball at the top of the femur. And that ball on the top of the femur loses its cartilage in osteoarthritis. And part of the operation involves replacing not only the ball and also the socket. The new socket is made of titanium. It looks like this. It has a roughened surface that the bone grows into. It takes about 12 weeks for that bone to attach to the hip socket. And once it grows in, it will stay attached for the rest of your life. Once this is secured in the pelvis, we snap in this polyethylene liner and it will give you about a 30 years of service before it wears out. Down below, on the femoral side of things, there's a titanium stem and that goes into the bone down below. We check with navigation and with robotics to make sure the leg length and the position of the implants is perfect. And when we put everything together, this makes up the new hip joint, replacing the old arthritic joint with a nice smooth moving joint ready to be used for running, skiing, and all kinds of different activities. Ta-da! Oh, you have a nice singing voice, don't you, Alex? <laughs> no. Oh, what do we have here? Well, I have a big scar. Typically, you won't have a big scar after surgery. For a hip replacement, the scar is only about this big in the front of the thigh, and it usually heals up without issue. Does your age impact success of hip replacement? Interestingly, the answer to this is no, it does not. Whether patients are in their 30s or 40s, or 80s and 90s, studies show that the vast majority of patients are satisfied with their hip replacement, between 90 and 95%. In terms of alleviating pain and improving function, hip replacement is consistently excellent as far as orthopedic operations go. Is there a downside to waiting for my hip replacement? The only real downside to waiting for your hip replacement is that the time that you're waiting is time that you could be enjoying the benefits of the hip replacement. The best time to have a hip replacement is when you're ready for the surgery, and that's different for every patient. Some people are ready right off the bat. Some people need to wait a long time before they feel comfortable with the decision to move forward with the surgery. It's different for everyone, and there's no right answer. What does a hip replacement feel like? Well, it feels like this. It's made of metal. Sorry, <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> because a hip is a ball and socket and it really just rotates, most people will feel over time like the hip is normal. Commonly, people will forget that they had their hip replaced and they can get back to all the activities that they truly desire to do. Who is a good candidate for hip replacement? who is not. A good candidate for hip replacement is someone who has osteoarthritis or another condition that has damaged the cartilage in the hip joint. A good candidate is someone who has tried all of the non-operative treatments first, anti-inflammatories, maybe cortisone injection, weight loss, and physical therapy to strengthen the muscles. People who have poorly controlled diabetes, 
are an example of someone who is not a particularly good candidate until they get their diabetes in check. Likewise, cigarette smokers need to stop smoking in order to reduce their risk of wound healing problems and infection. People who are overweight should try to get down to their ideal body weight, again, to minimize the risk of complications. How do I choose a surgeon for this? When you're evaluating what surgeon you want to do your surgery, the most important thing is how many of these do you do every year? If you have a surgeon that only does one or two hip replacements every year, you're at higher risk for complications with your surgery than if you're having your operation done by a surgeon that does more than 30 to 50 surgeries a year. Ultimately, you should have a good relationship with the surgeon that you asked to do your surgery, and you should feel comfortable coming to them with questions, concerns, both before and after your surgery. Alex, how many surgeries do you do? In a normal day here at Dartmouth Health, I will do anywhere from four to eight joint replacement surgeries. In the past year, I performed over 600 surgeries. Every week, four on Tuesday, four on Thursday. Hello. Great question. Question was, when can I get back to exercise after hip replacement surgery? In the beginning, we're mostly going to have you walking, with a walker for about two weeks and then a cane for about two weeks after that. I tell patients at about one month they can get on an exercise bike. Start doing gentle pedaling, nothing strenuous. It takes about 12 weeks for the implant to grow into the bone, and there's a lot of exercises that you can't really do until that implant is solidly attached to the bone. The key is to ease into everything gradually. Don't do too much at once. Try it out, see how it goes, take a couple of days rest, and then come back to that exercise afterwards. Do I need to lose weight before hip replacement? Hip replacement surgery carries risks, any surgery does. And for some patients who have a lot of excess weight, if their BMI is greater than 40, the risks of surgery become significantly higher than if their BMI is less than 40. Surgeries on patients who carry a lot of extra weight can be technically more difficult, meaning we may have to make a bigger incision. And it also means that wounds can take longer to heal or have less potential. Some people who have really high BMI can actually have problems with their nutrition levels and they may need extra protein and calories to help heal after the surgery. The truth is, is that patients who have higher weight do have some increased risks of hip replacement and that has to be balanced against the potential potential benefits of the surgery. Should I worry about anesthesia during hip replacement surgery? Certainly it's safe to worry about anesthesia because it is a medical intervention, but truthfully, the risk of anesthesia is quite small. We try to do most of these surgeries under spinal anesthesia, where some numbing medicine goes in your low back, makes your legs go to sleep for the surgery. You don't need a breathing tube or a breathing machine, and the chance of having a problem is quite limited. How can I help a loved one after hip replacement? There's probably a couple of things you can do. First and foremost, be a support. There's gonna be good days, there's gonna be bad days, and it's helpful to have someone there telling you it's gonna all be good at the end. For the first couple of days, even though most patients are pretty independent, it's helpful to have somebody else around to help heat up a meal, do laundry, maybe get in and out of the shower. All in all, patients after hip replacement are generally pretty self-sufficient, but it is helpful to have someone around to help. Oh, hi. You have a favorite joint. <laughs> I don't discriminate against joints. I love them all. It would have to be the hip joint. Pretty sure it's the hip joint. When can I? When can I what? Go running. Running is tricky after joint replacement. I will tell folks you should probably wait at least three months before any real vigorous activity. Running is more challenging. It may take you a year to 18 months before you feel comfortable running. And for many folks, they just never feel comfortable running after a hip replacement and focus on low impact activities like swimming, riding a bike, walking, hiking. Have a shower. You can shower as soon as the first day after surgery. The dressing we place on or the bandage can get a little bit damp. And so it's okay if you take a shower and a little bit of moisture gets on the bandage. Typically we don't want it saturated and we don't want you submerging the wound, but it's okay to shower as soon as you feel comfortable. Drive. Driving is a bit tricky after joint replacement. There are some studies that say you can drive as soon as two weeks, others that say it takes closer to six weeks. I typically will ballpark the four week marker as a guide to when you should consider driving. I don't want you taking any narcotic pain medicine before driving and you should feel comfortable walking without assistive devices. Typically before you drive, it's a good idea to practice in a quiet neighborhood to assure you can get your foot from the gas to the brake safely and efficiently so that you can stop your vehicle. Have sex. 
You can have sex as soon as you feel comfortable after hip replacement. We have a brochure in clinic we can provide you about timing and positions that are most safe to get into. <laughs> <laughs> I just was curious to have your feedback. Just like, what is that? It looks like a hip replacement. That's not usually where the eyes are. That's all the questions I have. Thanks for listening and I hope you learned something. Keep in mind, everybody is different and these are general answers to common questions. We'll answer more of your questions in a video here.